Howdy! My name is Lisa Snyder and I'm the author of Photoshop CS5 The Missing Manual and co-author of iPhoto 11 The Missing Manual. I'm also the chief evangelist of iStockphoto.com, the world's most fabulous royalty-free image, illustration, video, and audio resource. I hope you enjoy the following step-by-step -step tip. Howdy! In today's tutorial, I want to talk to you about breaking old editing habits. You know, each time a new version of Photoshop is released, we gain new tools and new features. The only problem is that we seldom have time to experiment with new ways of doing the techniques we've done a thousand times. And that's especially true when your art director or client is hovering impatiently over your shoulder. So in today's video and the follow-up video, part two, I'm going to show you a couple of editing habits that are worth breaking if you're using Photoshop CS2 or later. That's right, we're not going to do anything that's CS5 specific. So the first editing habit to break is if you're tempted to create a new pixel based layer and then fill it with color, don't. Use a solid color adjustment layer instead. Case in point, here I've added a creative edge to our Indian Chief and I would like to create a new solid color background. Well, in the olden days, in days of old, long, long ago, <laughs> just kidding, what people would normally do is create a new image layer and fill it with color, just like this. So you could command or control click on a PC, the new layer icon at the bottom of your layers panel. That is a keyboard shortcut for adding a layer below the currently active layer. You just add the command or control key when you click that new layer icon. So here we've got our new layer. So we would perhaps grab the eyedropper tool by pressing I and we might mouse over to our Indian Chief's headband, pick up a nice color for the background, and then we would either use edit fill to fill that layer with color or you could use a keyboard shortcut for that which is option delete on a Mac or alt backspace on a PC. Now that's all well and fine until you need to make your canvas size larger for example. If you make your canvas larger you're going to have to refill that layer with color because it's not going to automatically adjust according to your canvas size, wherein if you used a solid color adjustment layer, it would. So let me show you that. So let's say we need to make our canvas larger. I like to use the crop tool for that, so I'm going to press C, draw a box around the image, and then while holding Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, I'm going to increase the size of the canvas, or rather drag one of these corner handles outward. Press return or enter, and now I've got my new canvas space, but as you can see, I've got transparent pixels all the way around. So I would need to refill that image layer with color. So let's go ahead and delete that layer. And if you're using CS4 or CS5, you can delete a layer with the delete key. Now let's add a solid color adjustment layer and show you the pros of going that route. So I'm going to do that by pressing the circle, uh, the half black, half white circle at the bottom of your layers panel. Give that a click and choose solid color. It's the first one in the list and immediately up pops the color picker. So let's say that that color is okay for now. It's actually picking up the color we just uh, chose with the eyedropper tool. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Now you want to drag this adjustment layer below your image layer or your Indian Chief rather. So I'm going to drag it below so I can see my Chief. Well now we've got the same thing we had when we used the regular old image layer. However, watch what happens if I use the crop tool to make my canvas size bigger. I'm going to actually zoom out of the image a little bit by pressing Command minus on a Mac or Control minus on a PC so you can see what the heck I'm doing here. I've still got my crop tool active so I'm drawing the box around the image and press Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC as you drag a corner handle outward and that will resize all four handles of the crop box at once. So now when I press return or enter to accept the crop, look how the solid color adjustment layer adjusted to fit the canvas. So we don't have to refill it with color. Another benefit is that if you want to experiment with color, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is double click the adjustment layer's thumbnail and you can summon the color picker. And you don't even have to go get the eyedropper tool to sample the color from the image because if you mouse away from the color picker, you automatically get it. Isn't that fabulous? You automatically get an eyedropper. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the red. See how I like that. I might try the yellow or I might try the brown or the, on the feather there. So as you can see, it's very, very simple to experiment with color 
when you've used a solid color adjustment layer because a, a quick double click of its layer thumbnail will summon the color picker. So that's editing habit number one to break and probably the easiest to assimilate into your daily editing routine. Another editing habit to break, let me choose another image. Oh yes, you're dealing with a Texas girl so you are going to see armadillos from time to time. <laughs> the other ha editing habit uh, to break that I want to share with you today is if you're tempted to run any filter on a regular old layer, don't. Instead, convert that layer for smart filters first. This gives you the ability to run the filter non-destructively, plus you get an automatic layer mask, which lets you hide the filter from certain parts of the photo that you don't want the filter applied to. Case in point, I could, in the days of old, duplicate my image layer by pressing Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC, run the filter on the duplicate layer, add a layer mask to hide the filter from the areas I don't want it to affect. Well, that's several steps. A quicker way to do that is to convert your layer for smart filters first. So I'm going to go ahead and press Delete and I'm going to go up to the filter menu and choose convert for smart filters and Photoshop says hey to enable re-editable smart filters the selected layer will be converted into a smart object thank you Photoshop press OK now when you go up to the filter menu and let's choose Gaussian blur so choose blur Gaussian blur and we're just going to let the 6.6 .6, uh, radius blur be just fine so I'm going to go ahead and press OK Look what happened over here in our layers panel. I have an automatic layer mask. If I paint within this mask right here, I'm going to be hiding the effects of the filter. So let's just do that to show you how cool this is. I'm going to press B to grab the brush tool. I've already got a nice big fluffy soft edge brush chosen, but I'm going to increase brush size by pressing the right bracket key, make it really big. And I want to paint with black because I want to hide part of the filter from the center of the image to get a, an a after the shot shallow depth field effect. So I need to make sure that I'm painting with black and a quick peek at my color chips, the bottom of the tools panel. I do see black, so it's down there right here. If black is not on top, just press the X key to flip flop your color chips. So as soon as black is on top, you can remember the rhyme, black conceals, white reveals when you're painting with masks. Just a quick click in the center of this photo gives me a great shallow depth of field effect. And you can see that my layer mask over here has updated with my brush stroke. So that's certainly a benefit of using smart filters. Another benefit, which I didn't mention yet, is that you've got blending options and opacity control. Because when you run filters on a smart object layer like this, or run smart filters, the filters themselves stack up very similar to layer styles. You can uh, toggle the visibility off and on by using the little eyeball to their left. And if you double click this little cryptic slider looking icon to their right, let me just double click that you get blending options. So you've got all of your blend modes that you're used to seeing in your layers panel and in other places. And here you've got opacity, which is very handy for some of those filters that don't have op or strength or opacity controls in their own dialogues. So I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity to 80%. We'll say that's good. And I'll press OK. So again, uh, this is the number two editing habit to break. Instead of duplicating an image layer and, run, and running a filter on that, or worse, running a filter on your original layer, which would be destructive, convert your layer for smart filters first by going up to the filter menu, choosing convert for smart filters. You're going to get an automatic layer mask, the ability to show and hide the filter easily, as well as filter blending options and opacity control. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll check out my full video workshops on creativelive.com. You can also connect with me on Twitter or on Facebook. In fact, if you click like on my Facebook fan page, you can get a free two-page cheat sheet each for Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, and iPhoto. And if you'd like to grab 10 free high-resolution images from iStock Photo, plus receive a discount of 20% on your first purchase of 50 or more credits, then you can visit my landing page at iStockPhoto.com slash Lisa Snyder. Until next time, may the creative force be with you.